Fables Radio, an unofficial audio adaptation of the graphic novel series Fables by Bill Willingham. Chapter 5, Remembrance Day. At the door by twilight, as promised, darling. I am desperately in love with you. I had a hunch. <laughs> Lord Beast, Lady Beauty, you're both looking grand. Thank you. Uh, let me hold the door for you, my lady. Flycatcher, is my wife not the very picture of radiance this evening? Without a doubt, sir. You wouldn't happen to know where they're selling the lottery tickets, would you? Uh, just inside, my lady, at the security desk. You mean all that fuss over there? Win a kingdom? Keep an orderly line, please. It's $100 a ticket, but $50 off if you buy five at a time. Love, if we don't hurry upstairs, we'll miss the sacred reading. All in good time, dearest. It wouldn't hurt to peek, would it? <sighs> marvelous turnout, Snow. Absolutely marvelous. Do you see now why I needed your help? It never would have occurred to me that the best way to sell my royal title would be a public lottery. All sorts of things never occur to you. How much have we made so far? As of this morning, we were closing in on 300 grand, but sales have picked up. I'd be surprised if we haven't doubled that by now. Oh, lovely. Who would have thought that so many fables would willingly spend money on a slight chance to win absolutely nothing of substance? Seems like we're the only genuine cynics left in this town. May I take your glass, Miss White? Yes, thank you. And I'll have another. Maybe pace yourself, dear? Go bother someone else for a while. There's bound to be at least one maiden in the ballroom you haven't tried to sleep with yet. Oh, are you seriously going to act like this all night? When did you forget how to enjoy yourself? I swear, you've had the same scowl on your face for the last 400 years. You want to know. You helped put it there. Isn't there a statute of limitations on playing the victim? Why dwell on one unfortunate incident from a dozen lifetimes ago? You're lovely and eternally young. Make the most of it, Snow Bunny. Move on. <laughs> In fact, tonight you're looking exceptionally lovely. Did you dress up for anyone in particular? Or is this just for my benefit? I'm sorry, I've suddenly remembered how tiresome you are. I imagine it'll only get worse after tonight. Take it easy. If you all would settle down for a moment. Every year. <sighs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Fables, please welcome to the stage our Lord Mayor Cole. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. It is so heartening to see us come together once more on this momentous night, this night of remembrance. <laughs> Elsewhere throughout the city tonight, in private homes and treasured public places, and upstate where our more inhuman members dwell, other glasses are being raised by those who could not be with us here tonight, but are still citizens of Fable Town and are equally determined never to forget. <laughs> now then, as we always begin... <clears throat> Once upon a time... So what's Cindy in all this? None of your concern. You pledge love and devotion to Rose Red, say you want to punish her murderer, and you're keeping a girl on the side. Miss Cinderella and I are friendly acquaintances, nothing more. <laughs> she told me she thought you were an axe murderer. She's expressed that opinion several times, to my face. Come on, we're missing the party. Try to get this through your skull, Jack. You're not just missing tonight, you're missing the next hundred remembered days. 
How's a century of hard labor up at the farm sound? This will not stand. For the last goddamn time, I didn't kill Rose Bread. You start telling me the whole truth for once, and maybe, maybe we skip the extradition upstate. Spare you a prison sentence, save me some paperwork. This is bullshit, Bigby. Sure, you've got Bluebeard here because you caught him red-handed, torturing me. You pathetic, bleeding child. Uh, but, but you've got nothing on me. You're gonna find out exactly how much I can prove. <sighs> but until I bring the hammer down, Mayor Cole has declared this a season of fraternity and understanding. I'm supposed to let you two loose on what's left of the party, provided you stay at least a dozen yards away from each other at all times. Wait, seriously? What game are you playing at, Wolf? At the moment, none, my lord. You've got yourself just enough time to clean up and get your annual donation into our beloved Mayor's pocket which will remind him what a good and supportive citizen you are. And leave the blades at home, please. <laughs> Very well. Uh, thanks, Bigby. I've got eyes on you, Jack. Yeah, okay, sure. And now, predator and prey, prince and pauper, are all of a single community. Allied in our undying memory of the homelands, and the unshakable determination that one day we will return and free our lands of the hated one. Would you like a fresh glass, ma'am, for the toast? Hmm? Oh, yes, thank you. Evening, Miss White. Cheers. Have you seen the sheriff? Not yet, no. The band sounds wonderful tonight, by the way. Well, thank you, ma'am. Please join me, friends, as we raise our glasses and our voices in remembrance. In light of recent events, I would like to make one addendum to our toast this evening. To friends and loved ones lost, whether their absence be long past or fresh in our hearts. And, as always, to the homelands! To the homelands. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you all for your time, your patronage, and your friendship. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are you all right, ma'am? I'm fine. And you are far too concerned for my welfare, Blue. I don't pay you enough for all the worry you spend over me. It's my job. Remind me to find a raise for you somewhere. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's almost your cue. Break a leg. Thanks. And try to enjoy the party. <sighs> I'll do my best. Excellent speech, Mr. Mayor. Ah, Blue. The stage is yours, my dear boy. Thank you, sir. Okay, fellas. Keep it snappy. Another bourbon, sir? Please. Hey, can I get a scotch and soda? Thanks. Evening, Cinderella. Hi, okay. Quite the shindig, huh? Truly unparalleled by all but the last several hundred. Uh, right. So, uh, uh how about you, Pinocchio? Got any special plans for tonight? Ugh. Booze. Great! My last night in the States, and I get to spend it with you two live wires. Hey, Barkeep, maybe skip the soda. You're leaving town? I am flying to Paris tonight. And who's fitting the bill for that? A friend. Mm-hmm. He's a kindly older gentleman who happens to enjoy my company. There it is. <laughs> you two have fun judging me from the bottom of your glasses. This time tomorrow, I'll be sipping wine from a private yacht on the Seine. Ugh. Lady Beauty, Lord Beast. Good evening, ma'am. You both look in good spirits. No thanks to you. <sighs> right. Perhaps this is best left for another time, Miss White. And cooler heads can prevail? I was hoping that we could put the unpleasantness aside. Especially since it seems that everything worked out in the end. Worked out? 
You are an arrogant woman, Miss White, telling us what sacrifices we should make, what you think is best for us. I don't think you'll be satisfied until everyone is as miserable as you are. Yes. Well, as I said, another time, perhaps. Of course, my lord. Have a good evening, Miss White. I'll take that, ma'am. Would you like another drink? Yes, thank you. You clean up good. (sighs) Sheriff. Something wrong? I was beginning to think I'd been stood up. You normally go to this thing stag, right? I'm sure you would have survived. (laughs) My god, are you completely devoid of social skills? Probably. Come on, you need to be out on the dance floor. Is this another part of your complex scheme to catch my sister's killer? Could be. Now, show me how we do this. (laughs) You've never danced before? Never. (sighs) Fine. Put your hands here and here. Follow my lead and try to stay off my feet. (laughs) Yes, dear. I think we have enough, my love. Just a few more. They cost a fortune we don't have. Why go into Hawk to win more lost lands and another useless title? We already have those. Your lands and your title. If I win, I'll be a princess in my own right. Still working minimum wage in a bookstore. Don't spoil the evening, darling. Yeah, what's a few more lottery tickets, right? Why not make it an even majority? (laughs) Excuse me? There's other folks in line, you know. You'll get your turn, Jack. How about now? Thank you. Grimble, I would like one lottery ticket, please. You're only buying one. Hey, not everyone in this town's made of money. Or credit card debt. (sighs) There you go. Thanks, man. Have yourself a grand evening, Lady Beauty. And may the luckiest sap win. (laughs) Get bent, Jack. I have had it with every single one of these people. Miss White was trying to offer you a truce, you know. And she can take that truce and shove it... (laughs) What she proposed was absurd and cruel. And I... Dear? You know I would never send you to the farm on your own, don't you? I've never doubted it. (sighs) Good. Let's go back to the party, love. Ah, come on, sweetheart. I'm all the man you need. It's still midnight. Again, that's very generous of you, but I'm waiting for someone. Yeah, suit yourself. (sighs) You know... There's always a chance I could be a someone by the end of the night. (laughs) Feeling lucky. Always do. (laughs) Cheeky. Name's Jack. Don't, uh, don't believe I caught yours. Mary. An absolute pleasure, Mary. Tell me, do you have any interest in a dance with a handsome, possible future prince? Maybe a drink? A phone number? How about we start with drinks and see how that lottery pans out? I'm <laughs> liking my odds already. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Briar. I, uh, I was wondering if, if, if you, um, I was wondering if, uh, if, if, if you, uh, Ambrose! Oh! Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Miss Briar. You look absolutely dashing. <laughs> Green's always been your color. Uh, you're, you're very kind, ma'am. And you're, uh, you look wonderful. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was wondering if, uh, if, if you, uh... Yes? Uh, uh that is to say, uh... He wants to dance with you! <laughs> well, I... I mean... Of course, Ambrose. You only had to ask. 
Th- thank you, Miss Briar. Shall we? <laughs> now. Uh, okay. You're welcome! What an unexpected spasm of niceness, Pinocchio. What are you talking about? Come on, you've been sour all night. Ugh, Sydney, unless you're buying me another round or pointing me at that damn blue fairy, leave me alone. Blue fairy? I've not seen her once at these things. She's gonna show up one of these days, and I'm gonna kick her tight little as your ass. <laughs> Why the chip on your shoulder? I thought she turned you into a real boy. Yeah, and she took it literally. Ugh. 300 years looking like a 12 year old. Meanwhile, Remembrance Day nostalgia's got more of a kick to it than a funeral. All these ladies around, and I'm just sitting here like a jackass waiting for my balls to drop. Aww. That's gross, buddy. Ugh, just leave me to my drink. Any of you folks seen a brunette? Medium height, pretty face, hopelessly in love with me? Maybe she's still in your dreams. We were hitting it off at the bar and she slipped off somewhere. Oh, that brunette? Shit, you beat me to it. She's cute. What happened to tall, dark, and wrinkly? I'm going out of town. I'm not dead. Her name's Mary, if you see her. Think she ditched ya? No way. She was primed. And clearly unaware she's the target of the most tasteless rebound in recorded history. A little soon, Cindy. You're the one jonesing after some girl. What's it been, two weeks? Life's gotta be lived, sweetheart. Anyone who knew Rose for five minutes would know that's how she felt. <sighs> sure. And how about Snow? Don't see you judging her. She's grieving. Please. She's out on the dance floor with Bigby. What? No. Where? Over there. Who's acting all manner of tasteless now? Look up. And I can't see my feet. Do it anyway. You look like you're trying to peek down my dress. Why would you wear that if you didn't want people to look? Maybe women wear low necklines to filter out the gentlemen from the dogs. <laughs> Woof. Ow, watch your feet. You just said not to. Uh, uh like this? <laughs> it's been a rather long time since I've done any dancing. You're doing wonderfully. Oh, oh. oh. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Careful. Excuse us. Snow, darling. I didn't know you had moves, Sheriff. I don't. Having fun tonight? <laughs> well, I can't speak for Ambrose, but I am. I... Uh, yes, yes, I am. Thank you. Oh my, you poor girls. Were you having that much trouble filling your dance cards? Ugh, go away. Finally run out of ways to amuse yourself, Charming. I'm afraid we won't be much help. Oh, on the contrary. Watching the frog and the hound on their hind legs. It's more than entertaining. You four make quite the spectacle. Kind of like a prince without jack shit to rule over. Watch the coat. It's worth more than your bloody pension. Enjoy your last moments of relevance, your highness. Ambrose, shall we try another? Right. Uh, have a good night, Sheriff. Miss White. <sighs> yeah. How long do we have to do this before we eat? Dancing was your idea. I didn't expect to be the center of so much attention. I don't care for Charming's opinion on anything, much less you. Uh, thank you? <sighs> care to drown your self-consciousness in alcohol? Please. Everything seems to be in order, Lady Briar. As always, deepest and fondest thanks for your contribution. You are a pillar of our humble community. And as always, it's my pleasure, Mr. Mayor. You have yourself a wonderful evening. You as well, my dear. He's all yours, Lord Bluebeard. No rest for the philanthropic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for leaving you waiting, Ambrose. Of course. Don't mind at all. Now, where were we? <laughs> 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 Mayor Cole, my contribution for the coming year. I hope it's to your satisfaction. Thank you, Lord Bluebeard. I apologize for the unpleasantness of the past few days, but I hope that your spirits are faring better this evening. I'm keeping well outside 20 yards of the well, Your Grace, if that's what you're asking. But rest assured, all will be resolved soon. I would hope so. And when it is... 
Perhaps there is need for a discussion regarding the draconian behavior of your sheriff. And if you should ever need anything, please know that I... I appreciate the thought, Crespin. I do, truly, but I'll be fine. Very well. Again, my deepest condolences. Thank you. Good night. Bigby, can you hurry up, please? I think I've had enough well-wishers for tonight. Just trying to flag down a bartender. Have you tried tipping them better? I'll be right back. Uh, excuse me, Miss White? <sighs> yes, uh, my name's Mary. It's nice to meet you. Of course. Hello. I I've heard some folks talking tonight, and I'm very sorry about your sister. Thank you. Were you close? Not for a very long time. Uh, uh, from what I heard, she seemed like a nice person. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? Rose was impulsive, bullheaded, selfish, and fearless. And she didn't deserve what happened to her. I, I see. Yeah, there you are. Uh, not again. I, I really should go. I'm, I'm so sorry to intrude. G goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Miss White, you look ravishing. Uh... Thank you, Mr... Saw you and the sheriff getting cozy out there. Excuse me? Bet he's feeling pretty lucky tonight with you on his arm. Gotta tell ya, the lug's been nursing the biggest crush. Colin. Hey, a friend. Excuse us, Miss White. <clears throat> All right, I'll grab us a table. I've been here all night, and you didn't sniff me out once. This suck is good. I'm pretty handsome, too, don't you think? Where did you get a glamour? It is the strangest thing looking at you from up here. Damn, you're tall. Colin. Hey, I'm following your rules, Wolf. Looking bright, bushy-tailed, and 100% homo sapien. Take it off, now. Yeah, I can't. It's a rental. One of those uh, turn back into a pumpkin when the clock strikes 12 kind of deals. Hell of a lot cheaper, but you can't take it off till midnight. Not without shelling out more cash for a counterspell. And those things are a racket and a half. You put all that effort into a person suit just so you could hit on the deputy mayor. Nah, I just want to poke my head in and check out the party. Being on the outside's rough, you know? Yeah. Plus, I scrounged up some cash for that lottery house at trying my luck. You want to be the lord of some lost homeland? Nah, but it'd sure poke a hole in charming sales if a pig took his title, eh? am I right? <laughs> Can I, uh, bounce now? Nah, just watch yourself. Snow White's a real knockout of close. And that dress. Shut up. Enjoy the party. <laughs> you too, pal. You read my mind. Problem? <sighs> Nothing that can't wait till morning. To Remembrance Day. To 364 days till the next one. <laughs> you seem tired. <sighs> yeah, well, it's either the past two weeks or all the champagne. You've certainly taken both in stride. Have you been counting? Uh-huh. How many am I at so far? Not telling. I kind of like you like this. <laughs> what, lit? Unwound. <laughs> You've been rather agreeable yourself tonight. Haven't seen you smile like that in a while. No. You okay? Bigby, do you think that I'm... cold? You've had a rough time lately. I think you get a pass for being on edge. I hadn't thought of Rose in... weeks. Not till you walked into my office. And before that, I just told Beauty to ship her husband up to the farm. <clears throat> Good isn't the same thing as nice. You're trying to hold Fabletown together with duct tape and a prayer, and this... This place was set to crumble around you before you even took office. You're not the problem. The system is? <laughs> something like that. Can we get out of here? And do what? <laughs> get something to eat, smartass. I'm starving. Doesn't look like there's much left at the buffet. I'll let you in on a little secret. They don't know I know this, but every year the caterers swipe the best food for themselves. They lock it up back in the kitchen. <laughs> really? God forbid the party-goers get into the good stuff. 
Think they'll scrounge up something in exchange for our silence? Come on. Huh. Bigby? What is it? Your face went all funny. Son of a bitch. You're brilliant. What did I do? Figured out the last nagging piece of the puzzle. Bigby, wait! Rose was a party girl. She had Mondays and Fables rolling in and out of her apartment every night. All those people. She needed a way to keep them out of the good stuff. What are you talking about? I know what happened to your sister. Tell me. Can't yet. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Snow, the next few minutes need to be handled delicately. If we're not careful, we'll lose our chance. Wait, the murderer is here? Get the mayor and Grimble. Meet me on the roof. What are you going to do? Prepare for my parlor room scene. What? You know, old-timey detective style, the who, what, where, and all that. I have always wanted to end a case with one. This is the last time I indulge you. Yes, ma'am. End of Chapter 5 Next time on Fables Radio, our finale, Chapter 6, Best Laid Plans. <laughs>